On this episode of Teardown, we are getting inside a hydro-locked 4.8 liter twin turbo V8 out of a Porsche Cayenne Turbo. We're going my, we're going my way. Oh. Oh, oh! Oh, it's like looking at a badly broken leg. Uh, the reason it's here is pretty much Nate Brown's fault because the next car in this engine would not have existed if it weren't for him convincing me to buy it in the first place. So once the Cayenne was released, it was a hit. Nothing else on the market that was as good as the Cayenne at so many different things. But why is it here? I would say the car and the engine would have existed. Maybe just you wouldn't have owned them. That's right. Um, and also, I wasn't driving the truck when you decided to try to cross a river that was, I don't know, 18 feet deep, whatever it was, uh, when you were eight miles into the mountains in Colorado. Fair. I guess if you do want the story on that, there's a whole series that kind of shows you why this is sitting here. Uh, how this engine just made it back from Colorado where we swapped in a new true. one into the Cayenne. Uh, but that is an entirely other series that we will link above. So order of operations today, obviously this is like a giant V8. So we it didn't is. just put it on our uh, engine stand already. It just honestly got shipped here. So we are going to strip all the accessories off, take off as much as we possibly can, and then put it onto the engine stand. And then we can really start to get inside and see how much damage we actually did. I'm hoping for some, some carnage. We'll see what happens. Uh, from the noises it made, there's carnage. We knew in order to get into the good stuff, we need to get deep inside this twin turbo V8. With that, we made quick work of the intake manifold that was holding quite a bit of river water still. Did we get anything? Oh yeah. There we go. So that's just what was in the intake manifold. What was left too, because I removed left? this on the side of the trail. Oh, uh, did you really? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. From there, we started removing the accessories sitting on top of the engine. While stripping the engine down, we encountered some of the common problem areas that any Cayenne owner should be leery of. Things like the plastic coolant pipe, fuel system, the frustrating location of your starter in case you ever need to replace that, asking how I know, and lots and lots of brittle PCV hoses. Oh, and a factory glued in barb you hope to never have to replace. Nathan Brown will tell us about that. This is the primary coolant pipe uh, on the 4.8 direct injected engine. As you can see, it ties together the two banks. And this barb right here is one of the only really common failure points of coolant pipes on these 4.8s compared to the 4.5s that have the coolant pipes that run through the valley. So basically, this is just like the Mezger GT2, GT3, and turbo cars, where Porsche used a Loctite adhesive to hold this barb into this pipe. Over time, uh, with heat cycles, this, the adhesive can loosen up and fail, and this can come out. It will dump all your coolant pretty much right away. As you can see, we have spent a, a bit of time taking all the stuff off to try to get to this. You basically can't replace this pipe in the car. There is an updated version that this barb screws in. If you're unlucky enough to have this come loose uh, on your car, you can possibly gain access to this, pull it out, or it will already be out, clean everything up, and use the new updated Loctite on it. Um, so some of these on the turbos and stuff like that will come out pretty easily. Um, as you can see, that, I mean, that was a little bit of effort, but that's Still, not a whole lot. That's just held in with a little bit of adhesive. Uh, supposedly, there was a manufacturing process where they didn't use enough or something like that. But I think ultimately, if you use adhesive to hold something like that in, eventually it's going to break down. All right, BZ, so we... Got a lot done. It looks a little bit different than it did before. It looks more like an engine versus an engine with piles of plastic and vacuum hoses and evap hoses and wiring harnesses and everything else on top of it. All that. of which very brittle, which we found out. But yeah, it's, it actually looks like an engine now. So we've got our, our valve covers off, camshafts exposed, a couple timing chains and everything. And surprisingly, it looks better than I would have thought underneath than I was thinking it was gonna look like. Yeah, and while you certainly carried way too much speed into the river, Cut, cut to cut, cut to that. Yeah. Cut to that. Ultimately, it wasn't like turning high RPM or anything like that, or even running for very long no. uh, with the water inside of it. Once we get the cam caps off, we'll be able to see for sure if there's any uh, actual wear there. But looks better than what I thought. From here, we'll remove timing cover, uh, the rest of the accessories. Yep. And yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what this actually like timing system looks like because never been inside one of these. Yeah, and I think I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but the 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 leak on the upper pan here is one that is considered somewhat common yeah, on some of thing. these yeah it's a thing and because of the it's a, basically because of the way it sandwiches together this particular unit is very difficult to service while the engine is in well, the yeah, car because originally when i thought i was like oh it's oil filter housing like so you saw these bmw engines oil filter housing gasket well 
not really a thing. This is built into the yeah. actual lower pan, or the entire pan the is- The whole sump, yeah. Yeah, a part of the engine itself. It's not just like yeah. a secondary thing. So anyway, so yeah, we'll, we'll pop this timing cover off. We'll start to expose some of that stuff. We'll go over a few things here and explain why this is better than most Audi V8s probably is. Sure. Um, and then go from there. Controversial. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. What you got there, bud? A little watery oil. Ooh. But yeah, you can see, I mean, half of it leaked onto this pig mat, but you can see that it's sort of like uh, the consistency of Italian dressing, which is great when you're going for a nice salad for dinner. Not so great when you're pulling your oil return lines for your turbochargers. So if we cared, we would be lining things up and, and securing Don't things. Don't slip time. Please. Interference engine. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, Nate, based on that timing system, <laughs> might not be super stoked. <laughs> might be a little rust. I mean, that's... It's pretty milky. Yeah, that's some... We're starting to get to the nitty-gritty of it. I'm, yeah. st I'm starting to see the indication of possible carnage that I was, I was really hoping for with this. <laughs> Otherwise, it's kind of a waste of my time. That's fair. I <laughs> wanna... like, when we got to the end of the en mini engine, Gareth was like, so disappointing. It's like, <laughs> I don't even know what happened in this engine. It's like, I want to see broken stuff. Well, you do kind of want that smoking gun, I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. You ready? Uh, oh, I guess those bolts were really all that was holding it on there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we can see, we have the timing cover off, and this is the full timing chain system of this Cayenne motor. So it's a dual chain setup, which is going to obviously be much more durable than a single chain setup. A lot of smaller engines, newer engines, they've gone to single chain simply based on efficiency and cost, less weight. Uh, but a lot of older timing chain engines are going to have these dual chains. Now, if you've ever cracked open an Audi V8, this is like the opposite of it. This is super simple, nice, big, giant adjusters, and, and there's three guides. Yeah. So for Audi, they've got a dual overhead cam, V8, almost identical, smaller displacement, four different timing chains, at God knows how many guides and tensioners. This has one chain and one tensioner that you can easily replace from outside the engine. Yeah, now this, this is, and this is one of the reasons why Porsche, like when they actually put their engineering effort into something, they can make something that performs extremely well and is remarkably trouble-free, service-free, and will last quite a few, you know, quite a few miles. 138,000 miles, unknown service history, and there's virtually zero wear. The way that the chains flow and the way they operate can influence how they wear on these guides. And that's one of the reasons when I get 12 valve VR6, you have to do timing chains at 100,000 miles or else because it chews everything up. Right. But on these, I mean, this is brand new. Like yeah. if you hadn't driven this through a river, it'd be fine. It would have lasted a long time. <laughs> the core fundamentals are really solid. Yep. All right, so um, we've got, eh, not the best looking cam cap, if I'm honest. There's some definite, a little scoring action. A little scoring action in there. The cam was fine, but the cam is not aluminum and the cam cap is. So you can see here that the intake camshaft has this adjuster that's oil fed. So there's essentially oil channel channels here in the head and in the actual cam cap that then feed through to adjust the cam timing on this sprocket. As you can see, it's a triple lobe uh, camshaft and the lifters themselves actually have two, two separate halves, like an inner and an outer, um, for the variable cam timing. With the upper valve train and timing system looked at, it was time to start the head removal process. That way we could get our first look at the real carnage. Oof. Oh yeah. As I say, I like it. I can't tell if this is... That's rust. No, but this is just <laughs> looking in. Oh. That's we don't know where this came from. Yeah, we don't know where the this asphalt came from. shipping. Yeah. Let's be real. All right, Nate, first, uh, first head off. Clearly some <laughs> wrong over there. So let's see how this side looks. Uh, I think it's gonna be, I actually think both sides are gonna be equally as bad, so. I think it'll be equally bad. We'll go, must go my way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hi-oh. <laughs> well, there's your problem. 
There's our smoke again. So I guess that one wasn't uh, wasn't down to compress. <laughs> this one definitely this, tried. Th there's a hap. There's a and good. It's got all the way up. There's some sludge in this bad boy. Oh yeah, this side's definitely looking a lot worse. The valves are clean. Head's totally fine. The valves are clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they got power washed. No, they didn't. This, I mean, this one's, I mean, still got a good two millimeters of water in it. Although, it, might, it might be well, more than that. And so, so, and shouldn't, so, so shouldn't that, shouldn't that piston be up all the way? Oh yeah. Come wait here. a second. <laughs> wait a sec. I'm, I'm pretty sure this piston is supposed to match that piston. Yeah. Well, these, these, tri I mean, maybe I'm totally I mean, wrong. Cylinder walls look great. Never made it up. <laughs> um, they, actually, they probably don't. All right. <laughs> oh, that'd be a beauty shot. <laughs> Next was exposing the complex oiling system in the sump of the Cayenne engine. From there, we could start to gain access to the rods and bearings to further inspect the damage. <laughs> oh. This is significant contamination. <laughs> This is what I this is what I expected to find. Like when you're talking about the amount of water it takes to I mean it doesn't take a ton of water to hydrolock an engine. Shoot. So here's what I kind of keep forgetting. And looking at this, you know, like blown head gasket or like coolant mixed in, sure. But I keep forgetting this is actual like water. Like water came into the engine, not from like the cooling system. It's like this is there this could is be a, a mix of silt. Fish swimming water. There's yeah, there's and like oil. silt and dirt and mud and debris and fish parts and tears definitely tears there was tears those were more so on the top of the engine where i was laying over <laughs> um yeah but yeah this is a significant amount of nasty 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 water yeah this Touched is a, a little this, bit this is a proper milk trick in order to get to the juiciest bits of this hydro lock situation we next had to remove the upper Ready? pan of the sump Ready? All right, wait, what are we expecting to see here, BZ? So we're, we're just about at the crank. I don't know if we're gonna see anything on the actual crank, but we'll probably be able to see something that's not happy. Probably some rods Yeah. that are not straight. If they're that bent, that'd be awesome. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh! Oh, it's like looking at a badly <laughs> broken leg. God, that literally just like grossed me out. I don't know why, because it reminded me of a bone so badly. That'll explain why I wouldn't run and why it wouldn't uh, turn over by hand very easily. Oh, boo. <laughs> Aaron. What's up? Yeah. How's it going? It's going well. We just thought you'd appreciate this if you have 30 seconds. Oh. Yeah. So we've got the, uh, the Cayenne engine open. Oh, <laughs> 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 I don't think this one was getting out. <laughs> oh man it's been rough it's it's been yeah nothing's looked good uh but yeah we we <laughs> turned that thing over what did it move out of the way yeah well you could see see it was wearing its way through here the few times we probably did oh <laughs> yeah it's good stuff so that's probably what was happening is that the rods bent it's then forcing its way past the crank Yes, yeah, so which that's is where then, you're ugling it. Which through. is then lining, which is loading the piston against the cylinder wall, which is why the cylinder wall is destroyed on that one. Right. Why don't we? Why don't we, we do can some? We take the caps off. Let's do some caps. Let's yeah. do some caps on while we're here. Yeah, there's definitely some some wear on the bearing, but you know, I, I haven't taken up enough of these apart, or really any yeah, of no, these apart, to know if that's normal, normal or not. Or not. Yeah. It is a bit accelerated, I would say, but it's not it's not hateful. Um, but you could definitely see like some kind of foamy. Uh, residue some yeah it had it had water chilling in it oh yeah 100 percent water made its way through the oil pump and into all of the various passages of the engine right so i mean looking at this there's tons of residue i mean this thing if you look it, the whole thing was just full of water yeah it was just definitely chocolate milk but looking at the rings like it doesn't look like anything's cracked or anything like that at least not on the cylinder i'm curious if anything gets worse 
Well, we're also um, going to see like the full cylinder walls now, like nothing yeah. in them. And the second, this second ring is seized. Oh, just or, rusted. Or very it's just, it's just rusted. It's very tight. It's now freed up. It was very tight. Yeah, these, uh, I mean, all of these bearings are honestly looking really similar. Yeah. Like the wear pattern and everything. Um, I, I think that's just the life that it was living. Yeah, I mean, what, what we're... What we're saying was we didn't know what the first 135,000 miles of life this thing had was. Yeah. Um, might be a little more evident now. But again, they don't, I mean, they don't look terrible. All right, so BZ, we were taking out some of the yeah, other. Yeah, we, we did a couple other rods. I don't know why, we just wanted to get out of the way. But really, we know what we're here for. Let's get this jacked the up. The one that's there. obviously jacked yeah. up. Yeah, so let's hit this first. Not that I'm expecting to see anything else on the bearing that we haven't seen already, but. Just a bunch of water in there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even better than I thought. <laughs> that would explain why it was so hard to get out. That's uh, not a straight rod. No, you could put that on your wall. That's a little bit of a bend. That is definitely wall art. That, that's like... You know what they call this? That Here's, went this way and that way. There's the Carolina Lean. This is called the Colorado Bend. <laughs> uh, all right, well, yeah, that's... I mean, we kind of saw that from before, but not that angle. So, we've got our bend, and then our bend, and we have our physical... Look at, look at what the... There's our contact. The, what yeah. the crank did to the rod. Somehow this didn't Barely break. Barely turning. And then we unless have- Unless this was when we were trying to like get it going and push the water out, unless this was just, that that was actually the tapping sound. So maybe it was- Probably. Started to bend and then we were able to get it to crank enough. And then when it sparked again, that's when it went doom. No, I mean, so rods bent. This matches the scoring. Again, we've explained this previously, but when things are trying to compress water and water has nowhere to go, metals ultimately bend and that's basically what happened here and then all of this is just carnage from this this essentially bending after the lack of compression so yeah exactly it's like a domino effect right yeah pretty much i mean so um engines act as an air pump air technically acts as a, a liquid or a fluid um however water which is obviously a liquid and a fluid uh is significantly more dense than air you can breathe air you can't breathe underwater did not know that Believe it or not. Um, so when you take your engine and you try to make it do that same thing, it, a lot of stuff ends up unhappy. S you know, so every once in a while, you can actually get away with just a bent rod, mm. rebuild it, um, but you ingested so much water into this and it got through every single bit of the engine. Um, and this is truly fantastic carnage. Yeah, that's, what, that's a smoking gun. This is what I was hoping to find. Yes. If I didn't find this, I was gonna be really Super upset. Disappointed. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's just get the rest of these out, see if we find anything else that's been. I mean, we did have some more scoring on the assembler, so maybe yeah. things are a little bit off, but I don't think anything's be as obvious as that. Yeah, I mean, even the one um, that we took out from here, where the water was sitting inside of the yeah. cylinder, it really wasn't that bad. Right. Like, the, it was fine. All right, Nate, so that is what is inside a hydro-locked 4.8 liter twin turbo V8. Any engine would be sort of similar in the sense of what could happen in a hydrolock situation. Yep. But specifically, you know, it was kind of cool to go into one of these Cayenne engines, which there's really not much out there on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of what I was expecting. I was actually kind of expecting a few more bent rods, more than just the one that we saw. Now, I mean, granted, if you were to send them to a machine shop and get everything measured, they sure. might be off by a little tiny bit I'm here I'm starting to disappoint you there. Well, I mean, you did your best. <laughs> I did, I did. You did I your gave, best. I gave, it, I gave it the good old try. Yeah, you know, and I had to call your, your wife and let her know that you were stranded. Oh, you can let her know that I'm late right now too, that'd be great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of Teardown. Uh, we've got a bunch more of these to come. Not all are gonna be in this scenario, but it is cool to go inside any European cars engine and see the engineering, what went into it, and then the things that can kind of go wrong. Yeah, definitely. Um, thanks for having me along. I'm, I'm sorry for the influence maybe and that's what friends are for, Nate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoy this content, of course, as always, give us that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Comment if you have any questions or just want to know more about this engine. Maybe Nate Brown can answer your questions. Uh, and just stay tuned for more. See you guys.